Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. If I was to mention to you the term edge finding, if you're like me, the first thing that springs to my mind is a you know, high-end uh, Renishaw probe in a CNC machine, or maybe a Hamer 3D taster, or even a precision ground edge finder with an LED light and a beeper. However, most of us manual machinists, when we think of edge finding, straight away we go to the old-fashioned wobbler. Well, today's video, I'm going to show you another way. And I'm going to be showing you how I machined the bearing edge finder, which was supplied to me as a kit from Doug Gray Drafting and Design. Let's get into it. So I'm going to start work on Doug's bearing edge finder. Now this uh, silver steel that he's provided here or bright mild whatever it is, it's an imperial size and I've only got metric collets. Now this is 9.8 so I'm going to machine this down to 9.5 and that will fit my collet when I put it back into the lathe in the collet chuck to do the other side machining. So the first thing I'm going to do is face this side and then I've got a dial gauge set up on the back here so I can get an accurate measurement in so when I machine down the diameter. So let's face it, I'll bring it in a little bit closer. Okay, welcome back to Humpty Dumpty Machining Company. I've got my Dremel in my 3D printed tool post holder <laughs> attached to the Dorian. And I'm going to attempt a little bit of grinding here. Now I've got an old rag here covering the ways. I've sprayed the old rag with coolant. Good old trusty hang surface from the USA. I'm going to run the lathe in reverse and then turn the Dremel on and have a crack at it. Right, I've got the neck size in the chuck ready to go, which is up over 13 mil. That's the one I just did in ground. It's not too shabby. It's right on nine millimeters, so it will slip into my 5C collet without a problem. So this one's 13.12, so I'm gonna machine it down to 13. Let's face it first. Thirteen point zero one. So a little bit proud here. Okay, thirteen point zero three. I must be getting some deflection in that bar. Right, it's been about a week since I've been on this project and um, I've just come back to it. I've put on the bison collet chuck that my good buddy Paul Frink donated to the channel. Thank you, Paul. And I've put the collet in here and just uh, tightened up on this internal piece here, which was nine millimeters. I'm going to uh, center drill this piece now and put a dead center up there with some grease just to hold it straight. 
and I've swapped over to a high speed steel uh, cutter just so I can uh, you know, not put so much pressure on it and it should cut a bit better. All right, so let's center drill this. Right, uh, you probably watched me there auto feeding in reverse. Now, the reason I did that, I did have it supported with the dead center up here. I may have drilled it slightly out, you know, off center. And so what I was doing, I was actually machining a cone and that's not good enough. So by auto feeding in reverse, I'm just running a high RPM there, you can see that I've got a nice consistent feed all the way through there. Now I'm trying to hit 8.5 here and I've got to be eight mil here, all right, for the bearing. Right, oh, I've brought you back in here. I've done that machining and uh, I machined the little end off camera. Now it's not too shabby. Let's just uh, throw the micrometer over it. And we've got eight mil there, eight millimeters. All right, coming down, still on eight mil, still on eight mil. Now when I get to about here, I'm up 0 0.02. And at the very end, I'm up 0 0.03 0 0.04. So I think that's roughly a thousandth of an inch out, which I'm pretty happy with that. That's not bad over that distance, all right? I'm also worried about the concentricity of the part. Now where the bearing goes on, all right, I'm up there on the bearing at 0.04, so roughly, I'll just tighten that in again, yep, roughly about a thou up. And the bearing wants to start, if I just gently push it on here, okay, it's gonna go on. Um, I'm not gonna push it any harder. I might put a dollop of Loctite on it and put that bearing on and leave the okay. well enough. I don't have an arbor press, but I've got my wall down drill press, and I'm going to use that to press this in. I'll put a little bit of Loctite on the shaft, and it wants to go. Let's send it home for Johnny. And not a problem there, that went straight in. And uh, probably the fluke of the century. So now I'm going to prep the bearing surface um, on this one and uh, I've machined this down to 12 mil so I've gone 13 down to a shoulder of 12 now I've got a machine just a little bit up on 8 mil to put the bearing on so I'll start the lathe put my indicator mark on right there and lock it up there You can see that I've done the end for the bearing. Now, it's still too big. I'm 8.1 there at the moment. You'll, no doubt you'll force it on, but it'll become notchy. So I just need to tickle that a little bit more. was high there. Yep, spot on. That's going to go. Yep, I'm not going to force it. Uh, over to the arbor press and press it on. There we go. She's on. I'll give it a little tap. And that fixed it. Now there's the three edge finders done. Now, it wasn't as bloody easy as I thought it would be to be honest with you and uh, had a lot of problems um, with the first one. 
uh, my tail stocks a little bit out and every time I adjust it to get it right then I go back again and it's out again and I was turning a taper so you could see me uh, reversing out so, so cutting normal rotation um, but auto feeding in reverse so the last one we did that should be about 150 oh sorry 125 give or take not bad so that one there for diameters it was I oh, was shooting for 16 I don't know if you can see this all right 15 on the sh on the shank and of course 8.04 on the bottom there so I'm quite happy with that there's the other one 13 says yep just done a little bit a little bit lower this one 11.93 not too worried nine mil on the money 8.5 on the money gotta love that I've got the smaller edge finder in the little milling machine here. Now it does have a little bit of run out in the shaft, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I put the little um, DTI little finger dial on it and then much to my disgust I did have a bit of run out. But anyway, we'll show you how it works. So as we come over to the part in X, I can now come down. Now if I just come in real slowly, you watch the edge finder and Doug suggested that you put a couple little black lines on the bearing and you watch what happens as it starts to slip. Okay, you can see those little black lines so I know that that's the edge there now and I can set that on my dial or my DRO, come up, come out. Down we go again. This is, uh, for example, if we're setting the datum, the back left corner there. What we'd usually do on most jobs. Of course, datum can be set anywhere, but just come in nice and slowly as the bearing touches. There you go. It's quite accurate, and you can see the little lines. I might just take you in there a little bit. So I know that that's right on the money, and I can now set my Y. How friggin' cool is that? Thank you, Doug. Bloody, uh, bloody really happy with that, mate.